<laughs> All right, next up we've got Nathan Clarick. Hey Nathan, welcome. Hey, how are we doing? So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so, I'm Nathan Clark. I'm a recent graduate from the University of Bolton. Um, here I studied visual effects. Uh, within the VHFX, I kind of focused on the more technical areas, so I did some rigging, some effects, and then eventually some CFX. Um, and then I used Houdini for quite a lot of this, obviously. Excellent. So what's today's presentation going to be about? Okay, so today I'm going to talk about um, some lightning I created for a project set by DNEG at the end of last year. Uh, I'm going to talk you through my procedural systems, where I use, or I heavily use VEX to kind of generate some lightning. And then I'm going to talk you through kind of my like process for this kind of a project. Looking forward to it. Let's get started. Yeah, sounds good. Hi, everyone. Today, we're breaking down how I went about creating some lightning for my DNA project. So if you don't know what the DNA project is, it's a project where students can pick from a number of different briefs in a number of different areas of VFX, all set by DNA. They then can get feedback on the work from industry professionals with the idea that it will build experience of what it's like to work in the industry. I chose one of the effects-based briefs because I've always favoured the more technical areas of VFX and thought this would be a good opportunity to further my skills in Houdini. So for my project, I was provided with a Houdini scene of a crystal and a capsule and tasked with creating three separate magic effects. This is what the scene looked like when I got it. And here is my final result from the project. I created a lightning-based effect, a dissolve effect, and a fire-based effect. But today we will just focus on the lightning effect because I think the method behind it is the most interesting one out of the three. Okay, so making the lightning. There were three main stages of the process. I first defined the location of the lightning using simple lines. I then shape and animate the lightning using a couple layers of noise. Then I finally mesh the lightning to get a final shape. So to actually do this, I first needed to make the emission points for the lightning on the crystal. I wanted these points to change over time so the lightning would appear from different places at different times. At first I was doing this by animating the seed of the scatter node, but I didn't like how this looked as it changed the position of all the points at the same time. This was too uniform and I wanted each point to last for a random amount of time. Instead, I scattered a lot of points on the crystal. I then used Vex to randomly assign a frame range for each point. Then every frame, each point checks if it's within its own frame range. If it is in the range, the point stays, and if it's not, the point is deleted, allowing for random points to appear at random times. With this wrangle node, I took advantage of the Vex custom parameters. I have parameters defining seeds for different random calculations, and also maximum and minimum frame range parameters. Having the parameters set up like this is really useful for actually working on how you want things to look. You can dial in a look without having to go back and tweak numbers in your code. I use these a lot in different wrangle nodes of this project, as I often need to do a lot of tweaking to get the desired look. Next, for each emission point, I needed to create a strike point on the glass. To do this, I took each point on the crystal and moved it along its normal outwards. I then used some noise to animate the points randomly moving so the lightning would move slightly. I then snapped the points back to the glass. Okay, so now I had the emission point and strike point for each piece of lightning, I now needed a way to draw a line from one to the other. Doing this was easy enough using the polyline command in VEX. Once I had the basic shapes sorted, I wanted to make the lightning shapes look a little more complicated, so I wanted to make random pieces of the lightning fork off like real lightning can. The first part of this was deciding which pieces of the lightning should fork. This was done by randomly generating a number on each piece of lightning, and then checking if it was over a threshold. If the random number was over the threshold, it would fork, and if it wasn't, it would not. This threshold was an adjustable parameter, making it easy for me to dial in the look I wanted. To do the forking, I made a new midpoint at a random distance between the emission point and strike point. I then added a polyline from the emission point to the midpoint. After this, I made two polylines that both go from the midpoint to the strike point and a duplicated copy of the strike point. Then finally, a point jitter was used to separate out the two points, making it look like the lightning has forked. After the point jitter, I snapped the points back to the glass, finishing the base lightning shape. Here, I also take all the endpoints of the lightning and add them to a group that will be useful later on. I will need this to help with sourcing the sparks that will be emitted from the end of the lightning. I also will use this group when adding displacement to the lightning, as I will not want the ends to be displaced. Okay, next I need to start adding some more detail to the lines so it looked more like lightning. The first step in doing this was adding more resolution to the lines using a resample node. 
After the resample, I used a fuse node to reattach the forking lines back together. The first detail I wanted to add was some small extra branches coming off the lightning at random points. To do this, I first scattered loads of points within the container of the lightning. These would be the points the lightning could grab onto to make the smaller branches. I then used Vex to randomly select points along the lightning lines that would branch off. Each branching point would find 10 nearest points out of the scattered points and then choose a random point to draw a line to. After the branching it was time to start actually shaping the lightning like lightning. This was done with the first pass at noise. I used a VOP network to displace the position attribute of the points that make up the lightning line based on some AA flow noise. I used a 4D input so I could have time affect the noise animating the lightning. Something I discovered while working on this project is that I find VOPs are a much better way of working with noises than VEX as you can see all the parameters and it keeps things much cleaner. I resampled and fused the lightning lines again to an even higher resolution to prepare for final details. I repeated the same steps as I did with the last VOP network to add a higher frequency, lower amplitude noise to just break up the lightning a little bit more. Next, I wanted to turn the lines into an actual mesh I could use for rendering. In theory, I could have just rendered the lines as curves, but I decided I would get more control if I meshed it myself before rendering. The first thing I needed to mesh the lightning was a U value along the lightning line. A U value on a line or curve is a value that tells you how far along the line you are. You can see it here on the lightning represented in red. To create this value, I used the vex function surface dist to calculate each point's distance from the endpoints of the lightning, which I defined earlier on while creating them. The output from the surface dist command was then fit between 0 and 1 to make the numbers nicer to work with. I then used this u value to create a scale value that was going to be used to define the thickness of the lightning mesh. This will give the lightning a nice tapered effect as it gets thinner along its length. To actually mesh the lightning, a polywire sort was used with the previously created scale attribute as its thickness. The mesh of the lightning was slightly clipping through the glass container, so an easy fix to this was using a boolean to delete any of the lightning mesh that stuck out of the glass. This normally would be bad for topology, but since this was rendering with a flat shader, it didn't matter. Okay, so that's everything that went into the lightning part of this effect. The next thing I did was add some sparks on top. The spark setup was pretty simple, as it was mainly based around a pop net where I had particles emitting from the tips of each piece of lightning. One thing I did have to make sure of though was that the amount of sparks per piece of lightning stayed consistent. This was done by having the impulse count of the pop source nodes be multiplied by the amount of lightning strikes at any given time. The sparks were meshed by first turning them from a single point into a line using a trail node and an add node. Then the line was meshed similarly to the lightning with a polywire node. I used a VOP network to make an attribute based on some noise which was used to slightly randomize the thickness of the polywire. The final render from Houdini looked like this. I knew the final result would be pretty reliant on comp to look good due to the amount of glow needed. I did the rendering with the Arnold renderer as it's the renderer I'm most comfortable with, and then I made sure to get all the AOVs I could possibly need out so I could really polish it off in comp. This is the final result after comp. I was really happy with how it turned out. The colours of the sparks and the lightning contrast well, and I think this is my favourite of the three effects I did. So yeah, this project overall is a great learning experience for me. Um, it really showed me how flexible VEX is, and the way you can achieve most things in Houdini with it. Also getting the feedback from um, DNEG was a great opportunity, and it taught me a lot. But I think that's everything I have for you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to see any more of my work, there is a Vimeo link there on the screen. But yeah, thanks guys.